What's going on? This is Kerry Wood, sportsandswag.com. This is Sports and Swag Podcast here on Spreaker.com. Glad you could join us. This is the very first podcast that I'm going to do uh, for my website. Uh, very excited to do it. Um, this is something I've thought about doing for a while. I'm going to see how we're going to see how it goes. We're going to start out small, of course, but we're hoping to make it be a big thing and definitely make it a large part of what we do at sportsandswag.com uh, in the future. And uh, we hope you like it. Please let us know um, in the comments or whatever. I'm looking forward to doing this thing. and hope that you will uh, download these podcasts in the future. The first one I thought would be fitting to do the first one on a kind of a recap of what we saw last night in the first round of the NFL Draft 2017. Very interesting night, to say the least. Oh, man. I mean, I, I have a lot of questions for a lot of teams, for several teams in a way. Not a, you know, maybe not a lot. Uh, there were some teams that did very well. I think the San Francisco 49ers really stick out. Being able to get um, the big defensive lineman out of Stanford, Solomon Thomas, with the second pick. Well, it actually turned to the third pick, I apologize. And then being able to get Ruben Foster, who had his issues off the field and uh, health wise, he drops to 31. San Francisco trades up into the first round and gets in and gets him. So I thought it was a great first round for 49ers. I think probably you'd have to say they won it if there was a team that really won won the first round last night, although you could argue the Redskins with Jonathan Allen falling to them at 17. Uh, The the big-time Alabama uh, defensive lineman that can just kind of line up anywhere and do whatever you need him to do, stuff to run. He can rush the passer. He can, um, you know, rush in. I mean, the guy can do it all. And the Washington Redskins were a team that were unbelievably terrible. (laughs) Um, I mean, they were horrible against the run last year. And this guy falls to them at 18. I'm sorry, 17. And, you know, really is exactly what they needed. So that's a huge get for Washington. Uh, they're a team that got a lot of question marks themselves with losing some wide receivers, including Deshaun Jackson, and got a lot of things going on. We don't know what's going on with Kirk Cousins. So a little bit, maybe a little bit of stability, and maybe, you know, something to go right for those guys up there in Washington. So uh, let's see how that goes. I, I love that pick for them. Um you know, some other picks that I thought went, went really well. I think you have to look at Tampa Bay getting uh, O.J. Howard. Getting O.J. Howard at the, uh, man, I think it was right behind uh, Jonathan Allen, 18, as a matter of fact. Unbelievable that, that um, in this day and time where we're in, a, we're in a time where the tight end is so premium, being able to have that tight end that can stretch the middle of the field is just Paramount. I mean, it is it is a huge uh, advantage for an offense, for any offense, and for him to slide as far as he did was kind of crazy to me. But he slides down to Tampa Bay, which now, if you look at that football team, if you look at what they can do offensively with Mike Evans, who looks like a big seven footer running down the field, they can fly. <laughs> They could, I mean, they could go get the ball wherever Jameis Winston throws it. As long as it's in the stadium, this guy can go get it. Now, teaming him up with O.J. Howard, who you can put that put there at tight end, who can stretch that field uh, down the middle, but you can also put him in the slot. You can you can do a lot of things with O.J. Howard, and plus plus he's going to block for you. He's not he's going to he's going to knock somebody's head off on, on a run game. You know, we're not necessarily sure who's going to be the running back now there in Tampa Bay, but if they can find whomever to get there, they're going to have another guy that's going to be able to block for him. Man, that Tampa Bay offense is going to be incredible. It should be incredible with Jameis Winston probably licking his chops right now and thinking what um, what he can do, what kind of stats he can put up this coming season. So those are a couple of them that I would like uh, just off the top. Uh, a couple ones that I did not like, and a couple of those were right at the top of the draft. And I think you know where I'm going with this one. 
I think you know, Mitchell, Mitch Trubisky, the uh, quarterback out of North Carolina. Now, look, I don't have a big issue with him. Now, I'm not in that camp that thinks he's going to be a star. I, I don't. I think he could be a serviceable, a serviceable quarterback. I think he can be a guy that can come in and be a starter one day. But as far as being a star, I, I mean, I don't see it. But then again, we haven't seen a lot of him, which is the problem that I have. Him being the first overall quarterback, first quarterback taken overall, and to have him taken with the number two pick where Chicago traded up, they traded three future draft picks. I mean, think about that for a second. This is a guy that played 13 games. I'm sorry, that started 13 games anyway this past season. Started 13 games, and those are the only 13 that he started. And... The Bears trade up from uh, number 25. No, I'm sorry. No, from tw- I'm sorry. I apologize for that. They have, they trade up from number three, just one spot. So it wasn't a big trade up as far as that goes. But they give three picks, three future picks to the 49ers for a guy that we've seen 13 times. And for basically, you know, I don't know what who have we seen him play against. I mean, yeah, okay, well, they. They they had a nice win there at Florida State where um, this past fall where they got the field goal there at the end to win that football game. Um, he had a you know had a good game in that one, and that's a good defense. But other than that, who have they beat? Who who what what else can you really show us that this guy is okay? This is what you know these these stats just jump off the page at you. This game he was you know unbelievable in against an Alabama or Oklahoma or USC or whomever, Ohio State, Clemson. I mean, we don't see that. We don't have it. Now, like I say, the one, there was the one game that he did play in against Florida State, or we'll give him that, but there are no championships. And this is the same guy that just lost in the Sun Bowl, the last game of the season, the bowl game. North Carolina lost that game. So, again... This is not to bash him. I think he's gonna be gonna be okay. I don't th- I don't see him being a star. I don't see him being a Hall of Fame type quarterback or anything like that. But that's what you look for a quarterback to be if you're gonna pick him this high. You you think he is gonna be absolutely it? He's gonna be it. He is that he is a can't miss home run go getter, and, and and there's no no question about it. And there are plenty of questions about this guy. There's no way he should have been drafted this high. No way. So, again, we'll see how it works out. We'll see how it works out for the Bears, but I, I just didn't like that trading up for him, giving away three draft picks when you need them. When you, I mean, you've got needs all over on both sides of the football. They could have used those three picks and really gotten better. I mean, those were three early picks, third round. Well, two of them were this year and one next year. Still, I mean, it doesn't matter. Three picks for one guy that he quite frankly could be a bust. We'll see. Uh, speaking of busts, how about the Cleveland Browns? We've all known about them being having busts from, oh, man, the Tim Couches, the Johnny Menzels. I mean, the list goes on and on, the, the, uh, the Trent Richardsons. The list goes on and on for them. Um, it was good for them to get uh, Miles Garrett with the first pick. Uh, I don't think there was any surprise about that. We all know that was going to go down, and, and uh, that'll help. You know, he'll help anyone's defense the way he can rush the pass off the edge. I mean, that is a premium right now, having that guy that can get to the quarterback, get in his face, get him down, rush him, and maybe force him to throw an interception or whatever. That is a premium right now in, in, in really any level of football. And for them to take care of that was a big-time get. But I have a problem with the second pick. <laughs> Not that I have a problem with um, the guy that they got. They traded down from the 12th spot down to 28 to get the Njoku kid out of uh, Miami. Now, there, again, look, there's nothing wrong with this guy. I mean, he, he put up really good stats. He was one of the top three or four tight ends available in the draft so it's not any knock on him what I have a problem with is at 12 
if you're going to go tight end, if you're going to go tight end, if you're Clemson, I'm sorry, if you're Cleveland, you've got O.J. Howard sitting there right there who is still on the board at 12. Now, <laughs> O.J. Howard was looked at as being the best tight end in the draft. So if you want to go tight end, why not go him? Why not go O.J. Howard? I, I, I didn't get that. It, it just, again, what can you say? It's Cleveland. What can you say? <laughs> what can you say? So, again, Njoku is really looked at as being a guy that's going to be uh, a very good tight end here down the road. But, I mean, I'm like, okay, now you've given up. A, you could have had the man. You could have had the, the guy that made the big plays in the championship game for the last two years. It could have been a huge splash. And now it's just kind of a, you know, I don't know. Again, I, I didn't get that. I, I just have big questions about that. I've heard people talking about that today, and and, and I, they're right. I, I don't I don't understand what the thinking was on that. Uh, some other things, just kind of looking back at this thing, man. Looking, uh, kind of reviewing last night as we get ready for round two, which is about to start up now, which is going to be very interesting as well. And please, we're going to do another recap on rounds two and three. Uh, tonight or in the morning, just be on the lookout for it. We're gonna we're gonna break it down. See how you know. See how teams followed up last night. Of course, there are gonna be some teams that didn't draft last night that are gonna be going tonight. So that's gonna be interesting. I'm sure we'll see some trades. We'll see some this and we'll see some that. So uh, can't wait for that. But let's get into some other things about last night before we uh, think about round two. Um, Another pick that really stuck out to me was the Titans at number five. Uh, getting the kid out of Western Michigan, the wide receiver. Uh, stats jump off the page at you. You know, he nothing wrong with that. But again, you have to question. There's nothing. You know, there's nothing wrong with Tennessee going to get a wide receiver. Uh, Marcus Mariota needs some big time help on the outside. This guy, I think, can be that guy. But was he the best pick at number five? Was he the best guy? I don't think so. Mike Williams, I mean, you know, remember the guy that, the big tall wide receiver that, you know, kind of reminds me of Mike Evans a little bit. He's got that kind of size, maybe reminds you of a Megatron type guy. Can go up and get the ball, can make plays. He's made plays in big games. He's won a championship, been to another championship game. Sound kind of familiar? Yeah, I thought it did. Sounds sounds very familiar. Sounds a lot like another, you know, quarterback that I'm kind of thinking of. He kind of wore orange as well, played for that team called Clemson, you know. Yeah, you know, the team that rubs Howard's Rock when they roll down the, roll down the hill there at Clemson at Death Valley, one of the best traditions in college football. Yeah, that, that Mike Williams, yes. That Mike Williams to me, should have been the first receiver taken. But the Titans chose uh, Corey Davis, which, like I say, there's nothing wrong with Corey Davis. It's not a bash. I'm not bashing anyone because, look, all of these guys are obviously good football players. All of these guys can obviously, in the right situation, blossom and be fantastic NFL players. There's no doubt about that. But... If you want to go proven, if you want to pick that high, and we're talking about a top five pick, Mike Williams should have been that pick. That's just my opinion. Uh, speaking of Mike Williams, he did go. He did go two picks later, number seven, to the Los Angeles Chargers. I didn't say San Diego. Give me credit for that one. Didn't say San Diego. Could have, I could have easily said it. Didn't. I did not. He goes to the L.A. Chargers. I'm not really sure I get that. I mean, it's good to... It's good that uh, Philip Rivers, who's uh, at the twilight of his career, gets some help on the outside, I guess. I mean, we have a guy they can throw to, but, man, the Chargers had so many other needs. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I mean, they had so many other needs. There was so much defensive talent out there. I didn't get the pick. I'm sorry. The scoring points isn't the Chargers' problem. Stopping people is the problem. They couldn't stop anybody. 
So them getting Mike Williams to me was a stretch, but regardless of that fact, he joins um, Philip Rivers there in L.A., so that should be interesting. Um, and one of the things that we will uh, focus more on on SportsAndSwag.com on my website is the SEC, and the SEC had 12 players taken last night. Of course, led off by Miles Garrett, but I uh, went on from there to uh, the running back from LSU, Leonard Fournette, going to Jacksonville. Now, that was another curious pick. You know, I, again, Jacksonville doesn't have a great running back. T.J. Yeldon has been kind of the guy that's been kind of uh, – been carrying the load there for the last two years. Uh, he's done okay. He's not been great, but he's done okay. But, you know, so I can understand, okay, maybe you go for the best player. I don't know if Leonard Fournette was necessarily the best player available at that point, especially when you think about the longevity of running backs in the NFL. In the NFL. I thought they could have gone a number of different directions. Jacksonville's defense has been a lot better over the last year or so than it was back in the past. But come on, man. I mean, this, it, you know, they, and they don't get me wrong. They need offensive help as well. But I just, you know, getting, getting for net, and we know he's got injury issues, I thought was a little bit of a reach. That doesn't, you know, for net has top four, top five talent. But we know about running backs. I thought it was a curious pick. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But nonetheless, he goes uh, number seven to Jacksonville. Moving on, uh, some of the SEC players. Uh, man, probably one of my favorite players from the SEC in the draft, Jamal Adams, the safety from LSU. He goes to the Jets. I think that was a fantastic pick for them at number six. Uh, you look at uh, – you look at – uh, Marlon Humphrey. Who thought Mar Marlon Humphrey? Raise your hand. Who thought Marlon Humphrey would be the first Bama pick of the night? That was surprising. That was surprising, but Baltimore, it, it was a need for them. They needed help in the secondary. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Alabama fan, but I have to keep it real. I have to keep it real. I love Marlon Humphrey for a lot of reasons, and I mean, he's, he's been a fantastic player at the University of Alabama, but he's got one thing he has got to, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing he has got to improve upon. And um, they touched on this on the draft, I don't think it was on ESPN last night. He's playing the ball in the air. There were countless times over the years, over the years, there where the receiver that he would be defending would be able to uh, react or or uh, position themselves to catch the football. And, and maybe if Marlon would have, you know, positioned himself better, he could have knocked the ball away or, or maybe gotten an interception. That's one of the things he's got to be able to play the ball a lot better than he did at Alabama. And that is going to be something he's going to have to learn. He's going to have to get that quickly because I think they're looking for this guy to uh, help them immediately. I really, from what I've heard, they really wanted Marlon Humphrey, and they think he's ready. You know, again, I know that they've probably broken down this tape, you know, countless times. That, to me, is a serious thing when you're talking about a team being able to throw the ball downfield and uh, Marlon Humphrey not being able to track the ball and being able to make a play on it before the receiver does. That That is a huge uh, – that is something huge. He is going to have to improve on that before he's going to be really able to, you know, uh, blossom into that star a lot of people think he can be. Other than that, I mean, the guy's fine. I mean, he tackles, covers well. All of that, to me, is 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 in good shape. It's not a bad pick by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a little high, and it, and it was uh, definitely surprising that he was the first Alabama player off the board. Then Jonathan Allen, we talked about him falling to the Patriots. I'm sorry, falling to the Redskins. What a man. That was unbelievable for them to get him at number 17. Who would have thought that? A guy that's from the Washington area there in Virginia going back home. I mean, what perfect, what more perfect draft pick could there be for the Redskins with a, a team that 
could not stop the run at all. Couldn't stop me running up the middle on them. And now they've got a guy that can kind of push that, uh, you know, kind of plug that hole in the middle and, and uh, make them a lot lot better on defense as far as defending the run. So I thought that was a fantastic pick for them. You look at, uh, we're going down the list, you know, the SEC again, very, very well represented in the first round, as they usually are. Charles Harris, a big-time defensive end, has some problems uh, stopping the run. I mean, that is a big weakness on him as well, but he goes to uh, – he goes in uh, number 21. Then it goes on down. You know, uh, Tredavious White gets picked by Buffalo at 27. And then, of course, Reuben Foster, who had the uh, problems with the uh, the drug test or whatever at the combine, had some injury problems with the shoulder that, that came up right before the national championship game, as a matter of fact, had the surgery on it afterwards. So naturally he drops. Which that you know wasn't a surprise at all that he dropped. I didn't think he dropped quite that far, but uh, that definitely hurt his stock. He lost. I, I heard somewhere today with him dropping to thirty-one, he lost about seventeen million dollars. Seventeen million dollars from say if he had been drafted in the top ten. Seventeen million dollars of guaranteed money. That is, that is staggering. That is. Unbelievable. I mean, you sit there and think about it, you know, just, a, you know, how how different just a few draft pe- draft picks can be, di- you know, the, the space between can mean that much money. Uh, but that's that's what Ruben Foster uh, faces with uh, the injuries, with the uh, problem at the combine with the diluted sample. So. I don't know. It's one of those things. I do think he's going to a, a, a situation where he can flourish. Uh, like I said, San Francisco 49ers, I think, did themselves well. I mean, they've got a long way to go. They've got to find a quarterback. They've got to find – they've got a lot of other issues. But uh, taking care of two big spots on that defense is a huge get for them. And I think that they're going, they're well on their way to possibly getting back to respectability. Uh, man, so – Again, like I said, this was really an un- unbelievable night. I thought the crowd there in Philadelphia was unbelievable. 70,000 people strong, uh, booing Roger Goodell at every shot. <laughs> every chance they got, they booed Roger Goodell. Uh, man, it, it was a beautiful crowd. But, you know, I'm not surprised at that. Philadelphia represents everything. They are a fantastic sports town. I think they get a bad rap for a bad rep for how they, you know, a lot of them, are, you know, can probably be called obnoxious or whatever. But I think I call it passion. I think they're passionate fans and they want, they want a winner. They want a winner. They want their team to win. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I deal with those type fans around here, here in Alabama, man. You know, the Iron Bowl, the passion that it brings 365 days a year with Alabama and Auburn. I get it. I get the passion, and uh, so I think kind of, you know, he kind of misconstrued uh, the message that these Philadelphia fans bring. Those guys really brought it last night, and uh, it was a beautiful scene outside there for the NFL draft first round. Uh, man, I don't think I have anything else. I thought that, like I say, it was a really good night last night. Uh Looking forward to maybe, maybe even better tonight. I mean, there are a lot of good, big time players out there. Oh, there's one player that I did uh, mean to mention: Gary Conley going to the Raiders. That was a curious situation because of the uh, allegations against him on the rape charges. Uh, he took a reportedly took a polygraph. I think it was the Carolina Panthers ordered that polygraph for him of, of the Ravens one. I can't remember exactly, but. Uh, the Raiders obviously weren't, you know, he passed the polygraph apparently and they, everything seems to be good. Everything seems to be good with them. If it wasn't, I don't think they draft this guy 24, but we'll see how things go here in the future with them. We're going to hear, I'm sure this is it's far from the last that we've heard about this should be interesting. Should be very interesting. So, uh, 
again, just kind of looking at some of these other picks before we get out of here. Uh, some of the picks, I've seen a lot of negative uh, comments, not really negative comments on John Ross, the wide receiver out of Washington going to Cincinnati. I thought that that was a neat pick. I think they probably would have gone Mike Williams if he were available, but getting John Ross, who uh, ran the fastest 40 time on the 4 2 5 at the Combine, a uh, guy who can go get it, man. He should help Andy Dalton and A.J. Green with that offense. Christian McCaffrey is an interesting pick for the Panthers. I think he's a guy that will help Cam Newton uh, short passing game out of the backfield. We'll see about how he runs the, you know, how he can run the rock. Uh, probably was going to help out the Panthers on, in goal line situations where they're not running Cam Newton all the time. Maybe they can run this guy. Uh, you know, eh, not thrilled about that pick, but we'll see what happens. I thought the Saints got a really good one in Marshawn Lattimore, the corner out of Ohio State. I think probably the best corner in the draft. I think the Philadelphia Eagles did really well getting Derek Barnett. On the outside, the, the rusher from Tennessee, pass rusher from Tennessee, he can go get the quarterback as well as, I think, as well as Miles Garrett. I think getting him at 14 was a major win, despite the fact that a lot of the people didn't seem to really like it there. So a lot of their fans were kind of moaning and groaning about that pick. But I love the pick for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Evan Ingram going to the Giants, helping out Eli Manning. Man, that is a receiving core that is going to be big time up there with him uh, anchoring the middle of that field with Shepard on the outside and Brandon Marshall and or maybe Shepard in the slide and Brandon Marshall and ODB, you know, Beckham out there on the outside or whatever. On the, you know, uh, that is going to be a team to watch offensively. I think mean, they've got some other issues that they need to um, address. How about Takaris McKinley coming out with the picture of his grandmother as he got picked? Man, what a story that was, uh, saying that he told his, his basically the last thing he told his grandmother before she died that he was going to be a Division One football player and he was going to make it. And not only did he do that, he's made it into the NFL now. Just an incredible story, incredible passion from that guy. You have, I mean, you can't help but be a fan of someone that does that. And uh, I'm just anxious to see how he how he uh, adapts uh, going to the Atlanta Falcons, a team that just went to the Super Bowl. Man, a lot of really good stuff to Brill Peppers. I'm not sure about that pick going to Cleveland. I mean, he's, he's a versatile guy. He can put him anywhere. But, man, Cleveland could have gone a lot of different directions. And I don't know. This is just a weird draft for the Browns. It's a weird draft besides getting Miles Garrett, trading out of, you know, not going out and getting a quarterback. To me, they could have had Deshaun Watson at 12. Oh, that's one thing. How could I forget that? Deshaun Watson goes at 12 to Houston. But what about Cleveland having a shot? They were the ones that had to pick. They traded. How do you, again, we know you know you need a quarterback. You know you have to have a guy. And... The best guy on the board, in my opinion, Deshaun Watson, is sitting there right there, sitting there at 12, and you let him slide by. You let him slide by. I, I, I just don't get it. The Browns, uh, man, I think, let a good one get away. And, uh, again, you, if you're a Browns fan, you just have to hope. <laughs> you have to hope that, that this guy doesn't pan out. That's all, that's all you can say. You have to hope that. But, I mean, if, if he doesn't pan out, I'm going to be one surprised Man, I am going to be extremely surprised about that. Uh, Adore Jackson was, a, I think, was a nice pick for the t- for the Tennessee Titans at eighteen. Getting him uh, as a guy that can uh, bolster their secondary, and then also as a guy that can uh, play, of course, the special teams, the punt, kick returns, and all of that, and play a little offense. Maybe who knows? Maybe they'll put him on out there with Delaney Walker and those guys and have him run some routes for Marcus Mariota. That would be nice to see. Uh, Malik Hooker went 15 to the Colts. He was the second uh, defensive back. They had three defensive backs from Ohio State going the first round. Uh, Lattimore, Hooker, and uh, Gary, Uncon- uh, Gary Unconley. So uh, a very good draft for them. Again, SEC 12 picks out of the 32. 
Uh, no one even close to that. I'm uh, looking for a lot more tonight. Man, a lot of big-time picks still out there. A lot of big-time guys still on the board. Dalvin Cook is out there. Deshaun Kaiser is out there. Tim Williams from Alabama is out there. I mean, I mean, just, you know, lots of good talent out there. This is a deep draft, and a lot of teams are going to help themselves. Unfortunately, a lot of teams are going to hurt themselves as well. But one thing about it, we're going to be right here. We're going to cover it all, sportsandswag.com. I'm Kerry Wood, otherwise known as Mr. Sports and Swag. I'm out. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Hit up, uh, hit us up on the uh, on the web page. Follow that with the email address so you can get uh, notifications when new content comes out. Again, this is the first podcast. I I know it's probably not the best quality, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I, it's informative, and that is what we want. We want to be deep. We want to have information. It's not just for entertainment purposes. We want to talk for real and. Uh, really break down uh, this draft. We're going to do some NBA playoffs. We're going to do some SEC. We're going to do some Major League Baseball. We're going to do a little bit of everything. We want you to be right here. I want to hit, I want to see you. Uh, hit the like button, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm Kerry Wood, and I'm out. Have a good one.